happy Saturday to you, everyone. I hope you're doing well out there and enjoying this beautiful fall day that we're having. I remember back in 1969 as a young boy, uh, my mentor and I were in an excursion in the Coldfoot region of Alaska, just in the shadows of the Brooks Mountain Range. And it was early spring and there was snow that was starting to melt, but it's one of those types of springs in which one day uh, you're, you're sitting there thinking, wow, zero degrees, what a balmy day. And other days it's 20 below zero, 30 below zero. And we were on this excursion. And while we were moving in the shadows, again, of the Brooks Mountain Range in that area, suddenly my mentor came to a stop. And I had already learned a long time ago that when he would freeze, out of nowhere, just suddenly stop without any warning. I was already unslinging my rifle, already expecting danger. But I remember him reaching back behind him and just waving his hand back there at me. And he didn't move. So I knew that freeze. And I did. And I watched him. I remember to this day, he kind of turned and cocked his head just a little bit, ever so slowly. And then I remember seeing two snowshoe hairs just kind of dart out of the forest and run directly right by us. I thought, you know, that was weird. Normally you have to flush those things out. They'll just hide and they're camouflaged and they'll just remain right where they are. And we weren't moving, so we obviously had not flushed them out. What the heck? But by the time I could even halfway finish the thought, all of a sudden I hear, move, move now, back down the trail. And immediately I turn without hesitation. I'm racing back down the trail as fast as I can go. And I'm I'm freaking out. I'm just a young boy. I'm going, what? Is it a bear? What is it? Something's after us. And obviously I wasn't moving fast enough because he grabs me and actually picks me up. And right about then is when I heard this rumbling sound. And again, being a young boy, I kept thinking, what is that? What is that I hear? And it's getting louder and louder. And then all of a sudden I went, tanks? Tanks? Because we lived on Fort Wainwright, a big army base up in Fairbanks, Alaska. And they had lots of tanks there, a lot of mechanized divisions. And I'm thinking, there's tanks all the way up here? What are they doing up here? I've never seen tanks up here before. And then suddenly there's this incredible sound. Like a thousand tanks roaring by you. You could feel the pressure. You could feel the wind just coming back ahead. The snow is covering us. And we're just still moving and moving and moving and moving. And finally, it's quiet. And he puts me down. It was an avalanche and he had detected that avalanche in enough time to save our lives because he was a veteran. He was trained to recognize what's known as the combat rule of three, meaning when any time three anomalies occur in quick succession, you need to stop what you're doing right then and change what you're doing without hesitation. That's what it means. So what does that mean for you and what does that mean for your dog? The combat rule of three is something that I have paid attention to since that very day. In both my personal life, in business, definitely in dog training, dealing with clients, everything that life can throw at me. Have you ever heard, wow, man, when a black cloud parks over your head, bad news comes, it comes in threes. Yeah, it's kind of how things just work. It just does. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. And you don't know why either. But things tend to come in threes. And I need you to pay attention to that because that can help you with your dog as far as caring for your dog and also training your dog. It can help keep you focused, keep the blood pressure down. No need to get excited. No need to freak out. No need. See, my mentor that day, he detected that avalanche because of three anomalies. The wind had been coming out of the northwest all day long. And suddenly he detected it coming from the east. He's just feeling on his right cheek. One. Okay? Didn't run then. Just one thing. But he noticed it. Then the next thing he noticed, and he told me later that I failed to notice, was it's not unusual for snow to accumulate in the upper boughs of a lot of the trees, especially the spruce trees. And in the springtime, it'll start to loosen up as it warms up and it'll just come down. Hence why you never make your campfire underneath a tree that has snow in it. Because about the time you get that thing nice and toasty, working like a champ, it comes down right on top of you and out goes your snow. 
Uh, normally I notice that because it'll come down on you when you're not making a fire and it goes right down the back of your jacket and now you're freezing and it snows all over you and you're, yeah. So anyway, I didn't notice it, but he noticed it coming down on about four to five trees in a row, one after another. Two, normally number two. And then the third one was the one that I noticed, the snowshoe hares. And without hesitation, he acted. And sometimes that's what you need to do without hesitation act, but wait sometimes until you have three anomalies. We recently had this happen, which is caring for one of our dogs, Dave. Dave follows care around everywhere. He's like Velcro. I mean, she must be hooks and he's piled because they're like all the time. She was in the bathroom. There's Dave. Everywhere care goes, you can find Dave everywhere. All of a sudden one morning, Kara went up the stairs, Dave wouldn't go up the stairs. One anomaly, okay, no freak, whatever, move on with life. Then it was time to eat breakfast. Now Dave loves his breakfast. He didn't eat it all. He ate a little bit, but he left some. Two, two anomalies, okay, still not freaking, but we're alert. Now we're standing still, basically, feeling the environment out. And then lastly, he loves to go outside. We go outside, we look around, where's Dave? Normally he just follows us out. You don't have to like, coax him out, he's just out there. No Dave. Look inside and Dave's curled up on the couch. Three. Next morning, off to the vet. Sure enough, nine years he's never had an ear infection. Well, the ear infection that he had made up for all the previous nine years of not having an ear infection. It was very, severe there you go so that's just in caring for your dog so many times people will tell me Brian my dog didn't eat this morning one okay happens all the time happens in the pet industry happens at work at our kennel Brian uh, the dog's here for training it's got diarrhea one okay we're moving on diarrhea happens happens by itself a million reasons why it can happen let's wait for see what we get number two and then Keep moving, keep moving, work your way through the system. Same thing when it comes to dog training. I worked with a client, taught her dog how to lie down. All of a sudden, the dog's not lying down. Why is the dog not lying down? Because it, the dog, had done its own combat rule of three. It picked up on three anomalies from its owner. Meaning when we had trained the dog to lie down, the dog was on our left side. The dog was given the command down and the right hand was waved pointing to the ground, meeting all those senses that we needed to for the animal to properly interpret that the command was down and then to perform the command. However, you know, there's the old saying, I hear, I forget, I see, I learn, I do, I understand. Well, we must not have done enough of the doing part because the client probably went home, dog would not lie down and come to find out, she had moved to the other side of the dog's body. The command had changed from down to lie down. And instead of pointing to the ground, waving the hand, there was a snap of the finger. Down, lie down, lie down. So now the dog noticed three anomalies in quick succession with its owner and without hesitation, acted differently. It didn't lie down. That's how it handled that situation. So guys, kind of keep that in mind as you're working with your dog and you own your dog. And look at it in your own personal lives. Look for the combat rule of three. Definitely things to stand out. There's a reason why it happens. I don't know why, but if you spent enough time out in the wild that, like I have, that combat rule of three has saved my life many times in both the military and excursions into the wild. I now pay attention and it helps me solve deep canine issues, problems, psychosis, phobias, you name it. I always go by the rule of three. You know, again, now there's the obvious things, of course, you know, dog gets hit by a car. Oh gosh, geez, you only need three. But you know what I'm talking about here. I don't need to elaborate on that. I've seen it so many times. 
So pay attention to the combat rule of three, pay attention to it in your lives, pay attention to your dog, and realize that your dog will also be paying attention to it as well. I've said in many videos in the past, we were designed to notice what stands out. And I tell you what, sometimes nature goes, I gave you something. Oh, geez, you stupid human, let me give it to you two more times. And she gives it to you in three ways. Thank you, nature, for doing that. Sometimes it takes that. When you're just a 10-year-old boy following behind a man who was just born, born from the wild, made for the wild, you learn a lot of things. And I'm grateful for that day because I wouldn't be here. Combat rule of three. Applies to you, applies to your dog. Pay attention to it. Things come in threes. Have a great day.